Hello everyone, I'm Supreet and in this video I will talk about the story Going Places. It is in the syllabus of grade 12 and it is the last story in the book Flamingo. So let's get started. So we'll be doing this story, uh, you know, Going Places with the help of a flowchart. So all the important happenings in the story I will be discussing here in this video. The story Going Places explores the theme of adolescent fantasies. The story Going Places explores the theme of adolescent fantasy, uh, fantasies and hero worship. Many often all those adults we, you know, see around, they, you know, ex they are, you know, have so many fantasies and they worship heroes. They have like uh, very big uh, dreams and whereas they lack uh, that courage and determination and dedication and the, uh, you know, that hard work which is required to achieve those dreams. So same is the theme of this particular story. It has deliberately been added in the curriculum of grade 12 so that, you know, this is a very a, a kind of career deciding class so often students they have dreams which are impractical so this particular story tells you to have dreams which are practical and at the same time achievable dreams are not you know any dream is not unachievable uh, unachievable provided you have that strength courage dedication unflinching willpower and that perseverance to work hard time and again and again even you know the failure is not taken negatively by you then that's all right this is what is required and all these qualities lack in the main uh, you know character in this story whose name is Sophie now the characters if I talk about Sophie and Gen Z are both in the last year of high school the story opens when Sophie and Gen Z are coming back home from school we come to know that Sophie and Gen Z they are past friends and both of them they are in the last year of their high school but there is a sharp difference in Sophie and Gen Z Sophie is an impractical girl who only daydreams I hope I'm very much clear. Sophie is a girl who only daydreams. Whereas in case we talk about Gen Z, she's a practical, she's a practical and is aware. She, she's a practical girl and she is aware that she is destined to work in the biscuit factory as she belongs to a working class family. I wouldn't endorse, you know, uh, this fact that Gen Z is not dreaming and Gen Z simply says that she is only, you know, born to work in a biscuit factory. I wouldn't endorse that she is right in saying this thing and all that. But she's kind of practical. She's kind of practical. Where is Sophie? is not practical she uh, you know I'm not going to say this that she doesn't have the income and resources to you know achieve her dreams she doesn't have the qualities which are required to achieve her dreams then we say that Sophie lives in a male dominated family where her mother was only a shadow her mother was only a shadow and kind of submissive woman wherein the man if we talk about she's got two brothers she's got a father also and all of them they are football fans and their conversation around the dinner table were about Danny Casey who is a famous footballer their hero now Sophie is neglected at her family also and Sophie she lies a lot too Sophie's ambitions so show Sophie's ambitions are not rooted in reality they have no relation with the harsh realities of life. She belongs to a family which is, a, you know, lower middle class family. She sometimes dreams to become a designer, other times an actress, a bank manager and whatnot. She has lots of dreams. And, you know, to achieve those dreams, whatever is required, she lacks all of those things. So she only daydreams. She thinks that society is going to welcome her open, uh, you know, handedly whenever she'll be going there. She wanted to become an actress. She wanted to run her own boutique. She wanted to become a model. She wanted to become a bank manager. And whenever, you know, in conversation, we find Sophie and Gen Z's Gen Z time and again asks her to have practical dreams she asks her in case you want to open a boutique where would she get the money from she then she says that she would become a bank manager and how then she asks her how would she become a bank manager directly then she's then simply you know she's got no answers to the questions which she is being asked which she is being asked but uh, she is like only into daydreaming she is self-deceptive and she wanted to become she wanted to become something big she wanted to change her reality she wanted to change her you know lifestyle also for that reason she's got big dreams but no willpower to achieve those dreams and no qualities to achieve those dreams now sophie to attract some attention she lies to her family what she lies is she tells her father, father uh, first of all she tells her brother and uh, then her brother she uh, and then her brother he reveals the same thing to her father to her father that Sophie's met 
Danny Casey. So if he says that she's met Danny Casey, Danny Casey and Danny Casey is kind of like dating her or, you know, he's called her on a date. This is what she says. Nobody believes her. Rather, you know, at, at this particular time, her mother intervenes and tells her to be practical and to not to lie and not to, you know, get herself involved uh, into, you know, such things and all. So we see that intervention of the mother was also there to, you know, put Sophie on the right track, whereas Sophie was uh, not at all listening, paying any heed to what she was saying. Now, Sophie says that Danny Casey likes her. This was something unbelievable. To make others believe what was she saying, she tells them that she is going on a date with him. She says that he's called her somewhere to a secluded place. They met, you know, on, you know, on somewhere in the market or, you know, this is what she was saying. And he's called her somewhere to a secluded place. Reason being, he's all the time with fans and all that. So she's going there. And we find that she's so self-deceptive that to prove that to prove herself right, she actually goes there to that secluded place and waits there for long till the time, you know, till the time it is dark. And but nobody turns 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 up. As we all know that you know, she was only lying. She was only lying. So this is what Sophie's story. Is. Sophie's story is about daydreaming, habit of daydreaming, and habit of having impractical dreams and impractical ambitions no ambition is impract impractical provided you have those qualities which can convert your dream into reality sophie she only dreams and dreams but she has got no qualities to convert her dreams into reality this is the harsh reality of sophie now let's discuss the character assessment of sophie uh, as you've gone through this uh, particular uh, story and uh, specifically what Sophie is and how she goes about and all, though there are so many characteristics which I'm going to discuss here, other characteristics which are not being discussed here, you can uh, you know write in the comment box or you can also keep a note with you. So we see that Sophie is self-deceptive. She is not only lying to others, she is lying to herself also. She is indecisive. She is indecisive as to what to do after her high school. She is a liar also. She lies a lot and she is dissatisfied with her present life. She wanted to raise herself to some heights. She wanted a good lifestyle, you know, a, you know, a raise in the standard of living that she had. She is dissatisfied with her present life, but she is not doing anything to get rid of it. Rather, she is only thinking and thinking, which is, which is availing her nothing. And she's got big dreams, those unachievable dreams she is having because she is not having the qualities which can make her achieve those dreams and very, very high ambitions, very, very high ambitions, which can only be achieved with the dint of labor, you know, uh, with that hard work, perseverance and, you know, unflinching willpower, which she doesn't possess at all. Now, as this is, you know, the last story in the book Flamingo, so I'm going to discuss all the stories with their themes, genre, setting, protagonists, or antagonists, and the conflict in those stories. I'm going to discuss in uh, this video. So let's get started. First story is the last lesson. The genre, if we talk about non-fiction, non-fiction, you know, fiction is something which is, you know, um, has nothing to do with the reality it has only imaginative content in it whereas last lesson is not a fiction it's a non-fiction it has got no imaginative content but a historical contact uh, content in it and uh, this story was written during Franco-Prussian War in 1870 and 1871. If we talk about the main characters, Franz and Am Hamel are the main characters. And antagonists, we can say that Prussians or war wages are taken as antagonists or the characters which oppose the, may oppose the main characters. And conflict, if we talk about it is conflict is French versus Prussians. This is the conflict because, you know, two of the districts which are Algiers and Lorraine have been overtaken by you know, Prussians. So that is why French language has been banned in Algiers and Lorraine. So theme, if we talk about it is linguistic chauvinism, patriotism, freedom of language. These are the themes, most highlighted themes in the story. There can be uh, many other themes also, which you can make out. Now, moving further, let's talk about the story, The Lost Spring. It is the second story in the it is the second story and it is also a non-fiction story it is the actual these uh, the stories are actually the observations of the author Anis Jung and setting of the story is in the slum areas of Firozabad and Simapuri 
and if we talk about the protagonist's main characters in the story, these are Sahebe, Alam, and Mukesh. And antagonists, we can make out Shahukars, bureaucrats, money lenders, and even the public that doesn't what even the public that do not voice out the concern for those children who are working as child laborers. Those are also the ones who oppose it. And conflict in the story is human versus human and human versus self. These are the conflicts: human versus human and human versus self. Also, like those Shahukars and those ones who are working as laborers in those dark and dingy cells and human versus self like mukesh he wanted to become you know something in her in his life but you know internal conflict is there and those children who want to attend school who want to enjoy their childhood they are burdened with those responsibilities so they are also having some conflict in them and even the author is having conflict with him with the you know itself reason being you know the author was unable to open that school author wants to voice of the concern wants to reach out to those people wants to change their lifestyle but you know the author is kind of you know not that much able obviously the author is able but not that much able that to change their lifestyle uh you know no in whole now the theme of the story is child labor and illiteracy these are the highlighted themes the next story is deep water it's again a non fiction story rather than an autobiography by william doggles and the you know setting of the story is in california and also in ymca pool and if you talk about the main character it is doggles and uh, you know antagonist it's not uh, here and then we talk about conflict it's doggles versus self when you know doggles he's uh, being you know uh, he is being conquered by his fear and the way he conquers his own fear that is what the conflict is he wishes to enjoy all those water spots whereas his fear doesn't let him to enjoy those water spots this is what the conflict is and the conflict is and later on he conquers it also and if we talk about the theme of the story theme of the story is conquering fear and the traits required for the same conquering how to conquer fear and what are the traits which are required to conquer the same next story is the rat trap rat trap is the fictitious story it is kind of philosophical story and the setting if we talk about it is somewhere in sweden and the protagonist is the paddler you know antagonist is no one in here in the story and if we talk about the conflict there are two conflicts one is paddler versus self another one is paddler versus iron master paddler versus self obviously when he stole money from crofter's house he was kind of having conflict with himself already why did he do so he was repenting in the it can be noticed in the undertone also and uh, Paddler versus Iron Master. When Iron Master comes to know his reality, he wanted to hate him. He wanted to hand him over to the police. And later on, you know, he was asked. He was in with the intervention, with the intervention of his daughter, Adla. Paddler was uh, let to live at his place. Now, theme of the story is goodness can be awakened through love and understanding. Goodness can be awakened through love and understanding. Indeed, this is in the story. Uh, this theme is uh, quite valid in the story. Next one, the story is the indigo. Indigo, I told you it's a crop and it is again a non-fiction. It is historical story and setting of the story is in Champaran Bihar. And if we talk about the protagonist, it's Ma Gandhiji and antagonist, the one who opposes the main character that those are British. And conflict we talk about peasants versus british and gandhi ji versus british this is the conflict prevalent in the story now theme of the story is need of effective leadership to overcome any problem it was like gandhi ji who gave them effective leadership with his effective leadership qualities and unflinching willpower and you know with his courage and determination even uh, he faced so much uh, of difficulties uh, you know from the british side and from the police side but still he did not did not uh, surrender and he won in the end Next story is Poets and Pancakes. Poets and Pancakes is a story and it's again a non-fictitious story. It talks about a studio, you know, which used to shoot movies, which used to make movies, you know, when uh, Bollywood uh, movies were quite in the, you know, primal stage, new stage. And the setting of the story is Chennai, Tamil Nadu and the uh, protagonist main, uh, you know, if you talk about, we can't say that he's the main character, but he's the one who is telling us this story. There's no antagonist. There is no conflict in the story. It is simply talking about films and spotlight. Films and spotlight are being talked about how those people used to, you know, uh, work in those studios, what kind of problems they used to face, how those, those people were applied with, you know, huge and, uh, you know, buckets of makeup. This is what is being talked about in this particular 
uh, lesson poets and pancakes the next lesson is the interview it is non fictitious it is in you know setting is in us and italy and uh, protagonist is christopher silvester and amberto eco who are being talked about in the story who being interviewed in the story you know how the interview goes what interview is what are the different people what opinion people have about you know interviews and all that uh, this is what is being talked about there is no antagonist there is no protag uh, no conflict in the story and theme if we talk about it is so simple a theme that interviews and journalism last story in the book that we've discussed just now is going places it is fictitious and it, the setting is somewhere in zurich and the protagonist is sophie there is no antagonist we can say that sophie herself is an antagonist to herself and then conflict is in sophie versus self sophie she is unable to accept her realities she is unable to accept that you know uh, getting something in life takes courage determination and hard work but she is not thinking on those lines and theme is self deception this is what the theme of the story is so here i have discussed the themes of the stories all the stories in one go there are like seven stories we have in book flamingo eight stories sorry we have in book flamingo uh, six stories rather and two lessons only poets and pancakes are interview they are hardly like any stories they are simply talking about film making and spotlight and then you know the interviews talking about interviews and journalism so this is what and do you know all the stories are being dis discussed here with the genre setting protagonist uh, genre setting protagonist antagonist uh, conflict and theme thanks keep watching keep learning find the notes on this on supriti ol blogspot that's my blog keep watching keep learning subscribe to my channel thank you so much